were the idiots two weeks ago calling for Scott Satterfield's job? They just idiots. The worst. Moron. Um, it, it was great today. I took some extensive notes um, on my trusty uh, notepad here, and I think you can read it. That, that's all I got. That's go. all I got. I mean, the first real incompletion came in the third quarter because, I mean, that one to uh, Royer on the first drive just got stripped out of his hands, and that was actually a really good ball as well. So he goes the first oh, yeah. half in the Nick Niehaus record book uh, perfect because – I mean, there was one bad throw, and I think it was in the end zone in the third or fourth quarter when the game was already won. Um, well, I guess I can't necessarily say that after the pick game, but it, it felt over. Um, and he he was perfect. Nine minutes left in the third quarter, his first true incompletion. The guy, uh, the two, and I, I might be getting ahead of myself here because, you know, just we just kicked Houston's ass, but the two touchdown balls to Xavier Henderson looked like uh, looked like it could be on Sunday. Um, truthfully, and and honestly, credit to Xavier Henderson for catching both of those. Those were both really good throws, really good yeah. catches. Everything went well today. No, it did. I mean, the, the offense was humming. If if we needed Soresby to throw for 300, he could have done it. We didn't need it today. Kiner busted, what, a 40, well, yeah, 44 yarder. 44. And a lot of people would say that he doesn't have any burst. I mean, he he had some burst on that thing. I mean, he was running away from defenders. I'm pissed off that he didn't get to that 100-yard mark, 16 for 78. Yeah. They kind of bottled him up a little bit outside of that huge run. But, and you're right, Xavier Henderson, I said I said it, guys, I said it at the beginning. He's going to love Brendan Soresby, and he sure does. They got a great connection. He only had two, <laughs> he only had two catches for 34 yards, two incredible touchdowns, though. Yeah. And we got a four-headed monster from an offensive yeah. perspective. I mean, we have Xavier Henderson. Brendan Soresby, Corey Kiner, and Royer. I mean, those are dogs. some serious weapons. Ser dogs. I mean, he's a dog. Dogs. Yeah, dogs. All four of them. Nathan Hawks. What? What is he, Justin Tucker now? What yeah. the hell? Like, he, this guy's black. I mean, it's like an NFL kicker. I, I don't yeah, know if it, this is like a, a flash in the pan, but he's, he's what? He's two for two today. Long of 46. He hit two 50-yarders last week. I mean, this guy's a stud, and that's a – in college, that's a real yeah. weapon to have, a guy that can actually kick long field goals. I don't know mm -hmm. how he didn't win the job outright. I really don't. I, I, was, I was just getting ready to say I, I was so curious what he's been doing in practice to not win this job off the get-go because it seems like – it's been forever since we've had a good kicker. Now I know it's college kickers. So like they're not going to all go out there and be Justin Tucker, Evan McPherson, but this kid's three for three with law, all three of them being 50 yarder, 50 yarder, 40 yarder. I mean, it's crazy. This kid came out of nowhere. He's a Y they said he went to Wittenberg, right? So D three kicker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Out of nowhere. I, mean, I didn't even know he existed. I didn't even know he, yeah, he did. He retired from football. They were like, he was uh, going to retire. Crazy. I'm like, how much due diligence did you guys do on the kicker? They're like, they're like, we interviewed his family. Like he said, he was going to get into accounting and now he's oh. kicking 90 yard field goals. Oh, I, you know what? Chuck is on. Chuck is on right now. I forgot to mention our guy, Chuck Walter is on the ones and twos in the Michigan library right now. University of Michigan library. Apparently, Deborah, the librarian, told him to quiet down. Apparently, he's got some <laughs> Cincy lights inside the library as we speak. Chuck, can you talk? Are you allowed, or is it library voices? Or he's drinking in the lot? That's a felony, I think. <laughs> we can't nope. hear. You're on. We mute, can't dude. hear him. We can't hear him. Antoine Peak Jr. Guys, that's now. Five straight wins over the Houston Cougars. I mean, they've beaten our asses in basketball for quite a bit, but we're keeping the voices down. I think I'm the only one on this floor today, maybe the only person in Ann Arbor in the library. But this is what we do, guys. When we're having live shows on Vine Street someday, you remember when we grinded, when we grinded this out in the library. Back to you. Yeah, started from the bottom. You no, know, the defense, I, I don't care who we're playing. When, when you put up a performance like this, it, it's something to be talked about. It And Lily mentioned it to not overreact to game one. Last year, we started out, played e EKU. We looked unstoppable. Turns out we had the worst defense in college history that year. 
and we struggled against Towson. Yeah, they, they seem to just run the ball down our throats, which is not a good sign. But since that game, ah, well, the, the second half of Pittsburgh was disgusting. Yeah. Uh, but maybe Pittsburgh's good. Maybe Pittsburgh's good. Maybe all the Pittsburgh trolls, may, hey, maybe they're going to win the ACC. I don't know. Maybe they will. But what we did today, and, and Donovan Smith, I, I, we kind of dominated him last year too. But he's a he's a senior quarterback. He's played a lot of games, and he looked like he was lost. I mean, we they brought in Zeon Chris, who had never thrown a pass. They they had to bring him in, and he doesn't look like he knows how to throw either. So it's just exciting to see our defense, and, and it looked like they were flying around, man. Like anytime they even got a, a ball thrown to him, we had three or four guys just hovering around him. The second they touched it, gang tackling, it was. You, you got to give credit to that defense because they were awesome today. It, it was crazy. Everything went wrong for Houston. Everything went right for the Bearcats. Missed field goal when Houston was driving off the start. Fumble in the red zone. Another fumble in the red zone. I, I Honestly, I, I started to feel bad for them, and then I remember that they've dominated us in basketball for the past few years because it. I think this is the first game I've ever watched either as a Bearcat or Bengals fan or Reds fan where I'm like, Man, it seems like every single ball is going our way. It's crazy. That never happens. You're right. You're 100% right. I actually, when they, they didn't throw the flag on some P.I. and UC clearly came too early, I was mm-hmm. like, guys, just throw throw the flag. They need it. Like, they, yeah. they need a first down here. Please. This was awesome. It, it felt a little surreal. And I know it's yeah. like, oh, act like you've been there before. We haven't been here before with Satterfield, guys. <laughs> we have not won a game like this, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be way too optimistic about this season. Um, like I said, we got Texas Tech next week. But everybody had the pitchforks out for Satterfield, and I think you got to give credit when credit is due. And coached a hell of a game today from a defense, offense, at special teams, like I said, Nathan Hawks. I wonder who got the game ball today. I, I guess it's got to be Soresby, yeah. but there's there's so many guys that could have gotten it because it was just a great performance through and through. I, I don't really, I can't even think of like a negative yeah. minus the the long pass they threw. And I yeah. know the announcers were really honing in on like you see that their biggest kryptonite is the big play, and it did happen once. But I mean, hell, we, yeah. they gave up zero points. Yeah. Uh, I think it's one of those things if we could get a camera in the locker room and you see uh, Scott Satterfield and his southern accent giving the game ball to the entire defense. That that, that would be my guess, right? I, not I not a right. single player. Yeah, it might be. Because um, that one good play out of Houston, one good play out of Houston, it feels so good to say. And, you know, like I called us idiots, obviously, to start the show, but – that was his first FBS home win at UC. So, like, we finally can go home happy. Three and one, losing a devastating lead to Pittsburgh really hurts. But, God, if they would have pulled that out and were 4 0, man, I'd be feeling absolutely fantastic. And, you know, vibes are high right now. Yeah. You said that off the start. Like, if we just didn't blow it against Pitt, how happy would this fan base be? Everybody would be praising Scott Satterfield. Um, you know, we have this, and I have a couple thoughts here. I'll get to the transfers in a second, but we have this in the middle. Are the Cats solid? Do you know? I, I don't know. I mean, yes, maybe, I guess. Um, but winning that pick game, I would say, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we didn't, so... I guess we're in a wait and see period. I think if we win on the road next week at Texas Tech, uh, I'm solidify. I'm saying yes, absolutely, we're solid. Satterfield needed this bad. He needed it bad, and Chuck is back. You guys are glossing over something that's very important here. Is you guys are talking about the Pittsburgh game as if it matters with the new expanded playoffs. If the Cats win the Big Twelve, they're in the playoffs. So as of right now, I mean, let's not get ahead of our skis. I mean, we yeah. did just dominate Houston, but You're I mean, ahead of your skis, Chuck. All it takes is winning the Big the 12 playoffs? and get in. Pittsburgh didn't matter, folks. Rearview mirror. Rearview mirror. Back to reading. We, we, <laughs> we, beat, we beat Miami, a Mac school, and then beat Houston, who is now 1-3, and three, and Chuck's talking about getting into the playoff. I love, yeah, the, we, I love the thought. 
We also beat Houston last year, if that tells you anything. But I know, you know, new coach, every, I mean, for both teams, you know what I mean? So I, I was going to say, uh, am I flying too close to the sun when I say this, that, I mean, those four guys that we've been talking about, who wouldn't they play for in the Big 12? And maybe, you know, there's some good quarterbacks in the Big 12. You know, Sorsby's, uh, I'd be I'd be crazy right now to say he's the best quarterback in the Big 12. But, like, those four guys are seeing PT on any other team pretty much, almost. I mean, why can't we be good on offense? Why can't we beat these teams? I, I don't see why not. It would be the defense, right? But the defense just pitched a shutout. I mean, that's what I was just about to say. I, I think it comes down to the def- defensive side of the ball. Um, as everyone knows, the Big 12 is known for just getting, you know, 800 yards of total offense against them. If the defense can be respectable, I don't see a way in which I, I think our offense, to your point, can compete with anybody, truly anybody. Yeah. I mean, listen, we're talking like playing Georgia and Alabama. That might be a different story. But the Big 12, as far as the Big 12 is concerned, I mean, what, you want Cam Rising over Soresby? The guy's made of glass, okay? I'm, yeah, he's I, also I don't want to hear it. I think, yeah, he's 36, I think. He, he's literally, <laughs> he, he he's close to being able to pull from his 401k. Let's just put yeah. it that way. And yeah. I, I think Soresby's a top three to four quarterback in the Big 12. So big boomer sooner when he ranked him like, he ranked him behind Donovan Smith. He oh did. He put... Soresby at like 13 out of 16 and Donovan Smith at like nine. I think we saw today Soresby is one of the better yeah. quarterbacks, one of the better talents. And how about that play? We were already up big and he just alphaed his way to the end zone. Yeah. He just shouldered the shit out of a linebacker, yeah. went right. It was actually probably a DB. Either way, that fired <laughs> me up, man. So uh, everything from Soresby was fantastic. Um, just a great win all around. I think it was good for the program getting a win at Nip. 